What a way to start a podcast. You hear that sound? That's a shaker. It's a shaker. Somebody's making me a drink. It's five o'clock somewhere. It's only what time is it here? A little bit after noon. A little after noon. My Rolex is slow. I look at you throwing out the names there, Mr. Bling. Yeah, cut that out. Welcome to another Marketing RV, episode 023, with Gene Volpe and... Lorraine Rinelli. Hey, see how I switched it up that time? I like it, yes. We are at Split Rail Tavern. Obviously, I'm not Lorraine, by the way. <laughs> Just in case they're confused. You know, but if you chose one day, never mind. Um, <laughs> I won't, don't worry. Yeah, me neither. Split Rail Tavern in Westchester, and we are here because our special guest, Marty nope. McDonald, a bad rhino... He's kind of like the norm of the place. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, but that's not why we're here. That's not why? We're here for the salmon Caesar salad. But Marty can, Marty can go back to work. I don't care. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I've known enough about Marty for the last, we were talking about 15 years. I don't need to yeah, know Yeah, but our, audi- our audience may not, even though we have mentioned well, Bad Rhino a few times so on this program. you talk to Marty about what he does while and I'm you'll eating just, salmon you're Caesar just salad. Eat. There's a pattern every time we're out to a restaurant. You see this, Gene? I'm no. talking and you're eating. Y- that's true. All right. That is true. Okay. Somebody's got to taste the food. All right. Where's my Where's my uh, manager? I, I need to retalk <laughs> this contract. Marty, Marty McDonald. We're going to get into some crazy shit today. Oh, really? Yes. We <laughs> have a history meeting. Nothing less. Gene. Oh, I, I know this is why you joined this podcast because you know it's going to be fun. It'll be fun. That's for sure. We're going to hit a couple topics. Let's do this first. So when one of the things we're talking about up front is you have your own podcast. Correct. Tell, tell the people what it is and where they can find it. So it's called tapsandtees.net is where you can find it. So the title of the show is the URL, and it covers a couple of different things, mostly around craft beer, golf, and marketing. My goodness gracious. I know. <laughs> what a world you live in. I do. It's the best world. And if you go and follow Marty on, what, which one? You, you have a couple of profiles. Which is, your pro, which is your public profile on, like, say, Facebook uh, or Instagram? Yeah, so it's just Marty McDonald. You can find me on Facebook. And then on Instagram, it's Marty Mac one And then Bad Rhino is our company. Bad Rhino, which they can get at BadRhino.com? Absolutely. BadRhinoInc.com. BadRhinoInc.com. Yep. Yeah, so BadRhino.com will take you to an XL uh, men's clothing line. Well, get, so listen. back in the day, it would have been good for you, Gene. Back in the day? Right. So you have noticed how svelte oh, I Oh, yeah. Thank you for Looking the compliment. Good. I'm taking it at that. waiting for those abs to pop on well, Instagram. No, 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 again. Well, listen, I need to be a, uh, uh, a guest on your podcast because I drink as, enough beer to do that. That's a way to kind of get you know, a podcast invite. Just invite yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not shy. I think we know <laughs> that about me. You've known that for a long time. Mm-hmm. I'm anything but shy. So badrhinoinc.com, Taps and Tees, right? Yeah. Taps and Tees, which is Taps a brilliant name. I love it. But what we were talking about was get the important stuff in in the first 18 minutes, you say. Well, I mean, I'm not a podcast expert by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just a lot of the things that people have short attention spans. That's why a lot of Instagram videos are, you know, they're getting longer, but people enjoy that 30 second clip of whatever. And if they want to watch more, they'll go search it out. So it's just following that same model. People consume content differently nowadays. They're not going to sit around and wait for something or sit through commercials. They want to fast forward. They're trying to get through stuff. So as long as you keep them engaged and you get some of that important stuff out in the first 12 to 18 minutes, bang, you know, you have something that's good. People will more than likely come back if they're interested. Okay. I love that. So good content, which is what we're about to give. But let me give my important stuff first. You can check out Marketing RV at marketingrv.com, right? And also on iTunes, five stars only, or don't make me come out and punk you, right? I don't need any two stars or three stars. This show is the shit. You know it. Give us five stars. Uh, iTunes, Google Play, Google Podcast, all that good stuff, or you can always reach out to us on social media as well. So now that we got that junk out of the way, because I know Lorraine's got some stuff that she's going to talk about, maybe a play, maybe some other things. Should Before we get into the, the nuts and bolts of marketing, because you are an expert, and I know you probably hate that term, but you're you're a guy. Who no, does, I'm all right with that. You're okay with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not guru. Oh, fuck guru. <laughs> I hate guru. I'm with you on that. If you're not riding in like a, you know, I mean, you got to come in on like a, a floating carpet if you're a guru. I in my it. opinion, with, I've been saying that since IT days when I was a re- recruiter. Like someone would put guru and whatever. Yep. And that just doesn't work for me. That's funny. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna touch on being a guru at Periscope. We're gonna touch oh, on. Oh yeah, that's good. Then Meerkat's gonna, good too. <laughs> Meerkat's good too. So. Then we'll get back to MySpace by the end, and we'll be at Friendster at the thirty minute mark. Friendster at the third. Well, that is, we'll end it with our Friendster account IDs. Perfect. All right. <laughs> so I have a feeling you said this. And I'm going back to Lorraine here. This is uh, we're gonna do a two parter. You think? This will definitely be a two parter. You think so? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we'll, you you'll right have now. to keep your eye on it. We're gonna clip it, and people that li- listen to the episode uh, yeah, one will episode love episode one. two. 
And I know you, you guys, a little bit there, were talking a different language for me. Okay. I'm really, really starting to feel old. Why? What, why? I, well, I didn't recognize Friendster. That's just one of those old MySpace accounts. Really? Type things, Is that yeah. prior to MySpace? Yeah. I do remember MySpace was mostly for musicians. Yep. Okay. That's what it started as, and then people started to jump on it as like just a just like Facebook started for college media. kids, and then There's all the precursor of for yeah, 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 Facebook, yeah, yeah. right? All right, all right. And people still have their MySpace accounts, believe it or not. But I am interested in Bad Rhino, and okay. I want to talk to because I remember when that came to fruition. Because I and you mentioned recruiting, Marty. I thank you. I know that um, your partner in Bad Rhino, and we can, Rich, he says Di Matteo, right? <laughs> DiMatteo. DiMatteo, yeah. I don't know. But, yeah, it's yeah, you got Italian on that. <laughs> so, I, I remember he was uh, very heavily in the recruiting industry. The, when the market went a little nuts, what, was like 2007 or eight? Yep. Was that when? Okay, so he and a bunch of other people got sidelined. And he got very heavy, or maybe was already in heavy, into social media and blogging. And he was teaching me Twitter, and I was so thick-headed, I couldn't get it. But we right. actually did a talk or two together about social media. I had, was already on Facebook, and you know, and I brought him in because he could answer way more questions than I could. Sure. And I looked at Rich, and I don't know if he remembers this, and I said, you know, you're not in social media i said you're in marketing social media is how you market and he right. kind of looked at me perplexed and then it, i don't know how long after that all of a sudden i'm watching him on twitter and he takes his corn on the job and it, and you know and his hashtag and his uh what did what did they used to call it when they would have their little meetings on twitter yeah like he a, had job hunt chat on job monday hunt. nights right which, was, which at the time i think was the largest career focus job searching I, chat I believe HR it. groups yeah there's I believe a it because he was the on only there. one doing it at the yep, time and it was, was I it was so foreign to me and he would say Lorraine just go on and hit the hashtag and I'm like yeah, but what do I do I didn't get it I yep. it took me a lot of years but anyway shortly thereafter when did bid rhino form so we're actually heading into our 10th year excellent um, which wow. is crazy and it blows my mind um we were just talking about it and I said we got to do something to celebrate you know Rich has finally taken like some real vacation uh, we joke about it. We do take vacation, so sure. we're not a company that doesn't, you know, promote that rest. But being business owners and just being involved, we take everything pretty seriously yeah. with our clients. So you get caught up in things. And he's actually taken. A, he's actually that's why he's not here. He's taking that vacation. Good. Um, so we're going into our tenth year, and it's been awesome. You know, if you were to tell me that I would be doing this ten years later, I, I don't know if I would have but believed you. I didn't know much about where Facebook and Twitter and all those things were going. But Rich and I have known each other for years, um, way back. Um, actually, even before I met Gene, I met Rich, and he was still a college student. Okay. So we were working at the same company together as a recruiter, or I was a recruiter, and he was working on one specific project. And we just kept in touch. He left to go to another company. I did the same. Mm -hmm. And um, he called me one day back in, I think it was around 2007, 2008, when he was launching uh, what became Corn on the Job, and he was just trying to feel his way through like what he was doing. And to your point, Lorraine, he was talking about things, Twitter and social media and how it was growing. And I was pretty heavily involved in just marketing from real estate stuff and mm -hmm. some other things that I had going on. And I've been doing it as a hobby, literally as a hobby since okay. 2002. So yeah. a lot of times I felt ancient. I turned the hobby into something that would pay me. And Rich came to me and said, look, I know you work with you know small businesses. I also know that you've done some of these things online with affiliate marketing, et cetera. He's like, I just want to pick your brain a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, cool. And we sat down. It was actually in Wayne, a uh, great American pub. Mm -hmm. and I can remember when he was just telling me about it. And I was like, I think you have something here, Rich, you know, just kind of, you know, go, keep going yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And that was early on. And then fast forward, you know, a few more years. Um, into uh, 2010, Rich, I hired Rich. Um, I hired him to work with me. I was head of talent acquisition at a company. Um, and I was like, I need somebody to help me and I need them part time. Can you commit to six months? Right. So he said, yeah, I, I need the money. So that's how that started. About three months in, he walked into my office. He's like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I was like, <laughs> no, dude, I'm like, you're stuck till the end of the year. And he started laughing. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, I'm fine there. He's like, but I want to get out of recruiting and, and really just, you know, blow up like more on the social media. Yeah, stuff. He, he saw the uh, And I said, I was sitting there thinking there's a little bit more to it. But we were going back and forth one day and we were just talking about it. He came in into my office, like I said. He then 
I said, come up with a cool name. <laughs> and Rich and I are great business partners that way because he's super well thought out and organized yeah. and I'm not. Okay. Just, we just put it over there. I can think big picture. He'll think about little stuff, which helps. And it really has a great balance to it. So I'm thinking Rich is going to take two weeks to come up with a name. And he did. Came back in 45 minutes, erased my whiteboard, write down, wrote down 12 names. One of them obviously was Bad Rhino. Sure. The other one was Moosehorn, and I can't remember the other 10. Get and out. that's where we started. Get out. And Bad Rhino just was the one that you picked. It did he say how sense. he came up with that? It's funny because it just came to his head. Uh-huh. And I've been around a lot of different marketing people in the past 10 years, and they all talk about our color scheme. They talk about our logo. And I laugh. I was cornered in this hotel felt like I was cornered by a marketing executive from old school, like just from Madison Ave type person oh, from neat. New York. Like, yeah. And it was a branding conference and he was sitting there talking to me about all this stuff. And he was like, I love your logo and the color combo. And he's like, how did you come up with that? You have a hard charging rhino. It's got yeah. his foot down. It looks like it's moving forward. Yeah. And I started laughing. I was like, Rich thought black and red looked cool. And I thought so too. I said, we'll just add some white in there. Then uh, we had our logo done by Fiverr. Okay. And so we got that done. Wow. And then we didn't come up with a story. Like I spent, we spent, I should say, a little bit of money with brand research and things like that to try and figure out, like, do we need a story? Because people are like, oh, you could talk about how you were on a safari and all this other shit. And I was like, no. I'm like, the real story is Rich came to my office. He yeah, I like the, the real story. It's the truth. You don't so want to start it, out with a phony but, pretense. Yeah, exactly. So that's the truth. So that when we market for everybody, because you guys know in marketing, there's a lot of BS. Yep. And we do not talk about that. And sometimes it's tough, you know, when you tell somebody like, hey, I want to do this. And you tell them reality of it because yeah. they think the Internet's magic. Oh, and it's not my magic. gosh. I hear you. That's <laughs> something else I want to talk about. Well, I appreciate that. That's cool. Now, tell me, you, you know, your 30 second elevator pitch. What does Bad Rhino do for those that don't know? Absolutely. So we are uh, a digital agency that's social media marketing focused. And our main thing is to get brand exposure for your product or service mm -hmm. and also drive leads and sales. So that's it in a nutshell. That's okay. real quick. We work with clients, everything from the restaurant up the street all the way to large pharmaceutical companies and pretty much everything in between. We've done a ton of work with craft breweries, which has been awesome for the past five years, <laughs> um, as well as just working in, in different niches like golf and, and things like that. So. We um, have no built client too small or too big. Um, I mean, there's some that are just they don't get it that you have to spend money yeah. for marketing. Yeah. So when you say small, it's usually small minded. Right. And, you know, if they're willing to learn and do that, we haven't turned away too many. OK. But we also just lay it out there. Just like I said, no BS. We're going to tell you. Yeah. And it may or may not be a match. And it's right. as simple as that. Like no hard feelings. It's, it's just we yeah, want to be successful business. And, right. for our clients because we don't want you to turn around after three, four months and be like, hey, this isn't working. Right. Well, we told you what you needed to do. If you're not going to do it, then that's. You know how how are we going to work here? Exactly. You know? Yeah, you can't wave a magic wand. You, it's you got to be exactly. part of the process. Yep. I get it. I mean, even if it's an unlimited budget, they're still required. You need a cheerleading team from within. Everybody has to have buy-in, right? Yep. And we do. I mean, we have clients that spend you know anywhere from five hundred a month, and we have some that spend over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month in Facebook ads. Wow. You know, a month. You know, and That's they're crazy. getting a return on it. Yeah. So yeah. it's always interesting to see the the different variances between clients. And some of them are pretty funny. When I look at one, you know, crap brewery that gets upset because they don't want to spend any money and then they get upset because no one's seeing their stuff and they're failing. It's like, OK, can you figure it out or do we need you? We need to have, go into a remedial class here. <laughs> That's funny. Where do you see Bad Rhino going in the next 10 years? You're already 10 years in just about a big sale. You're going to sell it? I have no idea. Oh. No, I have no idea. I mean. <laughs> You know, you look at that thing, the biggest thing I've learned in business um, is always have an exit plan and multiple exit plans. In fact, before you get into a business, you should have like two or three. So, I mean, right now we have a team of four people in Westchester, PA, and then we have 12 consultants that are spread out throughout the U U.S. Wow. that we work with. And it's been really good that way. And we stay lean and mean, so to speak. So do you actually physically do the social media for your clients or do you teach them or combo both? So there's always a consulting aspect to it, but the majority of it is we take the whole thing off their plate. Wow. Then at you know, a later date, sometimes they're looking to hire somebody in-house, which is usually the case as they're growing. Mm -hmm. And it does make sense. And we come in more consulting and training. Gotcha. Gotcha. So there is there is a little bit of evolution with your clients to we some hope regard. So. I yeah. mean, the whole thing is if you're doing marketing at any level is for growth. Mm -hmm. So you 
you're going to evolve both, you know, not only product line and sales and revenue, but that's going to require more people. What if you have a client that wants some traditional marketing, some print material, some sure. some broadcast advertising dollars, you know, TV yep. or radio or whatever? Do you handle that or do you yeah, work with other? Yeah, we have partners other? that do pretty much everything that you can think of within marketing. Partners being other organizations? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's taken us a, lo- taken us a long time to get to the right partners, but we have a website partner. We have uh, traditional media buys as well as online media buyers. Um, and pretty much we can do everything. We just don't advertise it because we've won awards and we've also got a lot of accolades in our social media. Sure, you want to so focus on your electronic. we're social first yeah. and then... It's hard, you know, and, and it's awesome, too, when clients come to you and they say, hey, we want to do this. And we're like, oh, but we don't do that. And they're like, well, you got to figure it out because we want you guys leading it. And that's awesome to hear. And you want to make sure that you can deliver on that. too. It's so a challenge, but that's how you grow, because you then grow. you have yeah. to learn. Right. And yep. and there's no I, I would imagine there's no um, lack of experts out there that you can tap into in your network. The lack of experts aren't really necessarily, you know, that's not the issue. It's just finding people that can actually deliver on it. Gotcha. And I'm very big on that. So, like, if we have somebody that, you know, wants to do something video-wise or direct mail, you know, we do a lot of vetting, you know. Mm -hmm. We make Mm -hmm. sure and we have people that are on our bench, so to speak, that I think want to work with us. And we always just keep that bench moving. But we have our trusted partners for a lot of things, and it's been awesome. How does, you know, um, one of our most recent episodes we were talking about bad rhino and i said gene i'd like to have them on or is that a conflict because of what he does do you see your worlds um conflicting or how do you see them working together i have no idea what gene does (laughs) he eats and drinks yeah so do i and play golf um but no play golf so I think there's, you know, I've been on a ton of different agency podcasts um, over the years. Um, you can just search my name in podcasts and you'll find a bunch of them. But, it, you know, you learn from other people that are doing it. But also there's a certain expertise that people have that you want to be able to, you know, to work with and then build that network like we were just talking about a second ago. So I wasn't, as, as Marty takes a quick water break there. I think it's funny because when, when I just heard him say that, it sounded like my wife was on the podcast. I have no idea what Gene does. Most people don't, which is great when you're in marketing. <laughs> I must do a great job sometimes. of marketing. No, it totally is. I like it. I mean, I know in the past people have thought, you know, that I was in the mob. That's not necessarily a bad thing when you have daughters. You know, no, I, listen, I let that be. You think what you want to think. It's all good. <laughs> That's the best way to go. About and to that. the point, I've hooked you up with people before. Yeah. There's been jobs that um, that we've done together, quote unquote, done together. Right. Where I made the intro for you and Rich and walked out of the room. Yep. You know, so. Can you be careful when you say the word jobs after you say mob? You know what I'm saying? Oh, true story. Yeah, you're right. They're not, those two statements were not related. <laughs> Uncle Vinny. <laughs> those two, don't, don't call me after hours, Uncle Vinny. Um, so I, I'm taking a left turn here. Let's go left turn. Area 51. I know. So, <laughs> people are like, wait a minute. What the hell just happened? I think it might be the plague we need. You know, so let, get, wait, like, wait, wait. A million people go over there. Wait, before hill. you... No, no, no. Don't, go, don't jump right into it yet. Because, <laughs> because I, I sort of know you and I are on the same page. And I think there's going to be a great pay-per-view in our near future. I'll bring the food. You need to get hook up with the beer, right? That'd be awesome. So let's at least explain what's going on and where you think the genesis of it came from. Like, let's... Because there's... Uh oh! Wait. So, so Lorraine's jumping in. God. What the hell is Area Fifty One? That's what we're going to talk. You really don't know what it is? No, I feel stupid. Should I cut this out of the podcast? No, I, no. no I'm but I'm sho- I'm a little shocked. Well, we'll, well get tell into. Me. We're going to get into it. So I want to get your take on it because let, let's explain what this is, right? So from from my perspective, you are what I like to call a rabble rouser. Yes. And a shit 100%. starter. 100%. Yeah. So following Marty on Facebook is fun because as you get to know him a little bit, mostly 99, let's say 106% of what you post is to get a rise out of people. Pretty much. It's testing too. Right. But there's, there's, there's more to it than Marty being an asshole. Right. Okay. There's much more. But Although there's a, there's a lot of that to it. A lot of that comes <laughs> out. So the other night when we when we were prepping, not really prepping for the show, I was thinking about there's certain things, and I'm looking on social media, and I see, you know, you have a podcast. But I mean, a, a an Area 51 post. Which, well, let me let me ask you. 
what first of all, what is Area Fifty One? Number one, in your for, from your expertise, because obviously not everybody knows about it. Lorraine's telling us that now. Sure. And where did you first, not first hear about it, but what's been going on lately in our culture that maybe brought this back to the surface? Do you think? And then let's talk about what's going to be fun about it. Sure. So Area Fifty One is a place in the desert. Uh, I think technically it's in Nevada, not far from Vegas, where right. they have quote unquote all the UFOs and aliens and everything. If you've ever seen. Uh, the movie Independence Day, uh, you know, back in the day, Will Smith and Randy Quaid and all that. You'll see, um, you know, where they take you, quote unquote, to Area 51. So people think that the U.S. government hides secrets there and it's an Air Force base technically and all this other stuff. And they keep buying land around there so nobody can go into it. Right. Right. So that's just the, the quick down and dirty for it. So apparently... Somebody started as a joke online that they want to get all these people together and just storm Area 51. And like, hey, they can't stop all of us. Well, so real quick before you go, because I'm not sure if you... I was listening to you, but I was also looking for your post. Did you mention about the aliens? Because yes, that's a big... The aliens. Like, right. But then if you like scratch the surface on it, you'll see things out there where, I mean... I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes on, especially during the Cold War that went on and probably does now. Yeah. You know, they experiment on humans and other things and God only knows what's there. And, you know, people have seen stuff and they're like, is that a, an alien or is that an actual small human? You know, and there's skeletons, there's a bunch of crap you yeah. know, around there that feeds, you know, tabloid type stuff. And you put that online and it goes like wildfire. Yep. And it's been brought back in the limelight recently with the with Joe Rogan had a, yeah. a couple podcasts and on it. A Netflix. Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar. Is right. Yeah. And I forget what it, it's actually called, but I actually watched it and yeah, it's pretty if, fascinating. If you did you see it? No, I haven't seen it. If you can get through the first 10 minutes, it's very like it's real cinematic in the beginning, like it's right. a little ridiculous. But the actual meat and potatoes of it is pretty is really interesting because this guy Bob Lazar, if you listen to him, just on the surface, you would think he's a complete nut. Right. But if you wa- watch and listen, he's got his shit together. There's not, it doesn't seem to be anything that he's doing for publicity's sake. In fact, he sort of wants it to go away, except for this guy convinced him to do the, the show. I, I think the only I think what he said, which kind of makes sense, is that he's been tortured so much because he came out with this right. that he wants to kind of get it out once and for all and just disappear in a good way. Yeah, and they were messing with he's his family. That, yeah, friends, everybody. And he's... So, I mean, who knows what to believe, but at least from the story standpoint, he, he keeps it together. Like, he does. It's like a straight line. There's no really... And he doesn't... You know when you get that first impression of somebody, you're like, this like dude's a fucking wing nut. out of his mind. Yeah, and he's not... He seems like he's... Like you said, he's got his stuff together. He's not yeah. some goofy, like, weirdo that you see. You know, you get that feeling when you meet somebody, you're like, this dude's a little flaky. Right, right. And he's not that. So, it's been brought back in the daylight from those two things, and then, like Marty said, they started that two things. So, let me just read this real quick, because I want to see where your head's at with this. So, I'm going back to Marty's post, and the way Marty draws it up was extremely intentional. Yes. When, it's, when the post is folded, you only read the first line. When you unfold the post, you can see his thoughts afterwards. So, the, the part that you can see in, in the thread is, what time do we... <laughs> What time do we meet to storm Area 51 again? And then you got to unfold the post, and it says, "I'd rather not see the human experiments, but to be on was, uh, to be honest, but onward." So I come at it from a from a different perspective, I think anyway, which is this is almost to me like, and I'm going to get in trouble for this, natural selection. Yeah, 100. percent I think okay. we need more of it. We <laughs> so explain to me what. It, let's pretend that this is real, right? And th- really, people will show I up. I kind of hope it is. I sort of do too because there will be some great pay per view action. There's no question that will that if they somebody does this live with drone footage and stuff that there will be. Although I get nervous. What if it's like Al Capone's vault? I know. Do you remember that? We'll get Geraldo. We'll do it. <laughs> we'll get Geraldo. Open that That's sucker cool. up. Uh, so what nothing. do you think? What do you think? Give me, give me, give me your projection. What happens? What's going to happen? Well, I mean. First of all, it's funny because it started off as a joke. And and part of the reason I post some of these things is people take stuff on social media too too literal. They take it serious. It's, I mean, there's certain things that you should, you know, if you get like there's a warning, you know, storms and stuff like that. It can be a very powerful thing to keep people in touch. On the flip side of it, you're still dealing with human beings, which... You know, let's just be frank. You know, some of them are just not educated, nor do they think things through. So, 
God bless them, right? We're not so, talking to our listeners. Right. No, your listeners are probably the most educated that I probably would ever encounter. <laughs> right? So, yes. This thing started out as a joke on Area 51. So a lot of my posts are timely. So this is like a marketing lesson right in here. If you want to test things on your page and you want to test things on Twitter or on Instagram and you know a little bit of information to be dangerous, what you do is you look at like what's trending, right? I'd stay away from political stuff, but look at other stuff that's trending online because if you post it, you're going to get some more organic reach than normal. Now, you, you can just do keywords. You can do hashtags if you're on Twitter or Instagram. Don't use hashtags on Facebook, people. Stop it. It doesn't work. Um, but when I post something like that, it's more to see, like, who's seeing my info, who's going to comment. I know, you know, certain people are going to comment. But I take a topic that is just going to be there that's already trending and just see how it reacts. And then I don't like to just be like, hey, did you guys hear about that Area 51? I'm going to throw something in there just to go. I don't know if there's human experiments there. We hope so. We ho- I'm sure. But then I also love the idea that this thing took off and people are taking it serious. Like, we're going to go find out all these secrets 100% for sure. And we're going to storm an Air Force base. Yeah, yeah. Let's stop and think about that. <laughs> you know, Do my, we even have to stop and think about no, this? No, I know. But this is where people don't stop and right. think about it. So, like, one of my friends that posted on there, he is in the Air Force. And he's like, I'm hoping they do it because there's... It's just like, let's just go over this mountain and just get slaughtered. They're going to get killed. Oh, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Oh, there's going to be helicopters and, and Blackhawks. Like, oh, this yeah. could be the plague that we're waiting for. Oh, my God. That's awful. And I lo- but I love, I love it as well. Second I it. do, too. But, you know, I say that tongue-in-cheek. I mean, you want to watch a million stupid people get slaughtered? Uh, yeah, maybe. But, you know, in all, in all honesty, is like you're just sending stuff out there to kind of get them to talk about it. And that's what engagement is. And if you're just going to be simple and you're going to be plain and you're not really going to put anything out there that's going to get a reaction, guess what? Your, your marketing on social media is going to fail unless you're spending a ton of money. So let's get into that real quick. Did you want to jump in on the Area 51 thing real quick? Because I'm just fascinated. I, I'm completely fascinated. You got to look into that. A I little just bit. Uh, well, you guys were talking. I was on Wikipedia, and I'm just cracking up. It's it's an Air Force base. It's training. Do things go on that are secret? Sure. Well, if it's involving our military, I hope so. Because if it's not secret, then yeah. you know we're doomed, right? Well, you know I'm a conspiracy theorist at heart. I, I know, love it. and that cracks me up. And I love it. I'm not that I believe the stuff. Like, but, well, it's you know, there's always the chance of an element of truth. Sure, there is. You know. And that reminded me of Desert Wind, although they don't call it that anymore. So I did this search. I told you about this before, the big NASA data center in Utah. Okay. I don't know, Marty, if you're familiar with that. And you don't want to talk conspiracies. Is the government listening and watching every tweet and text? Here's my overall theory on that. You know what? We said this was going to be a two-parter, and we're going to leave the cliffhanger. Is the government really organized enough to take all the data they're collecting and use it against its citizens? We'll find out when Marketing RV returns with Marty McDonald. What do you think? Love that. Stay tuned. (laughs) Click play for the next one.